When can you enroll in Medicare Part A and Part B? When can you enroll in Medigap plans, Part D plans, and Medicare Advantage Part C plans? The answer is coming up next. Andy Stamis here with Medicare Mindset. One of the most confusing things about Medicare is enrollment periods. The enrollment period that gets the most attention is the annual election period, or AEP. But the AEP has nothing to do with actually enrolling in Medicare. I'll explain. To enroll in Medicare Part A and Part B, you must do so through the Social Security Administration. Depending on the situation, there are different time frames to do this. You might enroll during the initial enrollment period, or IEP, when you turn 65. You might delay Medicare completely or partially because you're covered in a group health insurance plan. Because of this, you'll enroll later during what is called your Special Enrollment Period, or SEP. And if you miss both your IEP and SEP, your last resort is to use the General Enrollment Period, or GEP. Let's start with the Initial Enrollment Period. Initially, Medicare beneficiaries have the opportunity to enroll in Medicare Part A and Part B during their IEP when turning 65. It's the three months before your birthday month, your birthday month, and the three months after your birthday month for a total of seven months. Start dates are always the first of the month, and there can be delays in the Part B start date when submitting the enrollment in months four through seven. For example, if you submit your online Medicare enrollment in month six of your IEP, your Part B won't start the next month. Rather, it will start three months later. So be careful when enrolling in Medicare during the final few months of your IEP. One final item to note, if your birthday is on the first of the month, you'll be eligible one month sooner. So a July 1st birthday will yield a June 1st Medicare eligibility date. To get enrolled in Medicare during your IEP, it depends on whether you're receiving Social Security benefits. If you're already receiving Social Security benefits, your red, white, and blue Medicare card will arrive about three months prior to your birthday month. And if you're not receiving Social Security benefits, you'll need to proactively enroll in Medicare online at www.ssa.gov or call Social Security directly at 800-772-1213. Be sure to watch our video, How to Enroll in Medicare Online, to see the step-by-step -step process and to avoid mistakes. The video will be linked in the description at the end of this video. Let's move on to the Special Enrollment Period. Your SEP takes place literally any time after your IEP ends and you're leaving a group health plan. If you're covered in a group health plan based on your current employment or a spouse's, you can delay Medicare until you need it, assuming the employer has 20 or more employees. This can be used any time while you're working or up to eight months after losing group health coverage, giving you a lot of flexibility on when you want your Medicare to start. Watch our video, How to Enroll in Medicare After Age 65, for guidance on how to properly complete the enrollment and not be penalized. The video will be linked in the description at the end of this video. I mentioned this can all be done without penalty, and that's because of your continuous coverage through a group health plan since age 65, based on the active employment of you or your spouse. But after eight months of separation from the employer, your SEP ends and you cannot enroll in Medicare again until the general enrollment period. Before we move on, here's an important note about COBRA continuation and retiree health plans, as well as Medicare based on end-stage kidney failure. COBRA continuation and retiree health plans are not considered coverage based on active employment. So you'll want to pick up Medicare Part B within eight months of your separation to avoid a late enrollment penalty and delayed start date. Additionally, Medicare coverage due to end-stage renal disease, or ESRD, is not an SEP opportunity. We strongly recommend accepting both Medicare Part A and Part B when initially eligible for Medicare based on kidney failure. If you don't follow the rules mentioned above, you're stuck enrolling in Medicare during the general enrollment period. If you miss both your IEP and SEP, you must enroll in Medicare during the GEP, which spans January 1st through March 31st each year. The application needs to be completed through a local Social Security office or by phone. You'll need the Application for Enrollment in Medicare Part B form, which can be located by typing in CMS40B in the search bar at ssa.gov. 
Important note, when you enroll in Medicare during the GEP, your Part B start date will be delayed to July 1st of that year. If this creates at least a 12-month period in which you should have had Part B, you'll be assessed a 10% lifetime premium penalty, and the penalty will be larger the longer you went without Part B. Now that we've summarized the enrollment periods for Part A and Part B, let's jump into the timeframes when you can sign up for supplemental medical and prescription drug coverage. Here's where we get into when you can enroll in supplemental insurance plans through an insurance carrier. Part D drug plans and Medicare Advantage Part C plans are one group of plans. And then we'll get into Medicare Supplement Medigap plans. When your Part A and or Part B is about to begin, you can enroll in a Part D prescription drug plan or Medicare Advantage Part C plan. After that, you have one opportunity each year to make a plan switch during the annual election period, or AEP. AEP spans October 15th through December 7th each year. During this time frame, you can enroll or switch a Part D drug plan or Medicare Advantage plan. The new plan will take effect January 1st. If you're happy with your plan, no action is required. The plan will automatically renew for next year. To enroll in a Part D plan, you must at least be enrolled in Part A. To enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan, you must be enrolled in both Part A and Part B. Let's finish up with our last enrollment period, the Medicare Supplement Medigap Open Enrollment. When you purchase a Medigap plan, the easiest time to do so is during your Medigap Open Enrollment. That's because there are no medical history questions during this time. Your plan approval is guaranteed as long as you do this in the months leading up to your Part B start date or during the first six months of your Part B coverage. However, if you want to change to another Medigap plan with the same or different insurance carrier, medical history questions can be asked. Your plan approval is not guaranteed. And contrary to what you hear, you can actually change your Medigap plan any time of year. The only wild card is whether you have to answer medical history questions. Is it during your six-month open enrollment or after that? We've covered a lot today. Now you understand the various enrollment periods for Medicare Part A and Part B, as well as the enrollment periods for supplemental insurance coverage. No matter your situation, we're here to help.